afternoon and welcome to the AJGS 30th celebration. For those I've not met in person or online, my name is Barbara Simon and I'm the president of the AJGS. And we've got a few surprises ahead as we explore the history and the legacy of our great society. There will be lots of time later for each of you to share your memories, but first allow me to say a few words. Since I became president, we've experienced the once in a century pandemic. We've added the word COVID to our vocabulary, along with learning to, to, date, to say things like it's epidemiologists, which I still have trouble saying, <laughs> Delta strain and variant, and deciding between going AstraZeneca, Pfizer or Moderna. It gives us a small glimpse into the experience of our grandparents and great grandparents who may have gone through the flu, flu epidemic a hundred years ago. So to run a society with no COVID model to follow, no handbook, no one to turn to for advice on how to run a society when we are in lockdown, another new word we'd all rather forget, has been quite a challenge. We found the only way to stay in touch was online. And this was yet another challenge. All of us had to learn how to access Zoom and another new word, but better still, a new way to connect. On the upside, it gave your committee an opportunity to look at ways to provide different services to our members. Our mission didn't change, to encourage and assist those with Jewish ancestry to research their family histories. And this mission continued throughout the COVID crisis and still continues today. So what did we do? We uploaded all 29 years of Kosher Koala onto the AJGS website and made them word searchable. The society was very proud to receive the 2021 Outstanding Publication Award for Kosher Koala from the International Association of Juni Jewish Genealogical Societies. So do you know how Kosher Koala got its name? Let me share with you the acceptance speech that Danny and I made at that presentation. This is just a short piece of it. Kosher Koala was first published in 1993. And in that first edition, editor Sophie Kaplan, a giant in the Australian Jewish genealogy scene, noted that since most of the Hebrew names for Jewish genealogical journals, Avotenu, Dorot, Shemot, Mishpocha, etc., were already taken, Australia would, and I quote, walk a different track, an Australian bush track with a name reflecting that we are Australian, we are Jewish, and that we live up a familiar gum tree, a menorah with pungent eucalyptus leaves. Sophie edited Kosher Koala for over a decade, and since then, subsequent editors Miriam Schifrin, Ricky Nash, my predecessor Robin Dryan and I have continued to ensure Kosher Koala fulfills its founding mission to entertain and inform members and the wider genealogical community of the latest trends, collections and innovations in family history research. We invite members to share their stories in our pages so other researchers can be inspired by the success of their peers and to preserve our families and our community's memories. So what else did we do? We scanned the ISBN numbers of all the books in the AJGS library, placed them on the website. We invited speakers to present talks on Zoom. And now they had no longer had to be in Sydney for us to access them. Talks were recorded and are available on our website. Another benefit of Zoom was that now members who lived outside of Sydney could join us. It's interesting to note that in a society that's been around for 30 years, there's only been five presidents before me and they've all been women. Can you name them? We made a short video to honor these indomitable women and tell you a bit about the role of the president. <laughs> Two ladies who were quite dominant in the society when it first started, and for many years thereafter, were Sophie Kaplan and Ricky Nash. As president, Sophie was 
I think someone who brought in a lot of knowledge. She she brought her knowledge and history of what she'd done with genealogy for many, many years before. I mean, I don't know how long she'd been doing it, but many, many years. And with her, her methods of, of researching and the books and the, and the materials, I think she was a very, very valuable person to have as at the helm. Sophie had already researched in countries around the world. Her way of connection was by telephone, not by mailing. This all happened years before there were computers, internet, and so on. Led by Ricky, AJGS held two monthly workshops at NSS Library. Ricky was a guiding light for the society and she was very well versed. Sophie was also, of course, very well versed, but everyone had their area of expertise. Sophie, Sophie came up with all these uh, magazines that were being produced by societies around the world. And Ricky introduced me to research at Church of the Latter-day Saints. Ricky Nash, as president, was very heavily involved in genealogy. She made a wonderful president and she did her job really well and, and helped a lot of people. Ricky was uh, the president for me who opened up so many doors in which I could pass through and know that her support was there all the way for me. She took a, a great interest in my journey as a president. She gave so much to everyone. She was such a generous person. And in turn, you know, the, the generosity spread um, from Ricky to many of us. And uh, I know many people have said they were so indebted to Ricky as I, as I was. The role of the president is, um, I think, um, to look after members, to help members find their families. That's the most important part. And to make sure that we have the resources to help them. So that's the books, but also the experts. Um, during my tenure as president, um, that was when our Kosher Koala started as an electronic journal. The e-report, which eventually was called again the Kosher Koala, and so that was a whole new thing. Another thing that, that I initiated was the Eastern Suburbs Workshops. It was very successful. Um, for a while it, it fell out because we lost our venue, um, but then that was when uh, Robin Bryan came good with the Waverley Library and we've just gone from strength to strength. I felt like a duck frantically swimming in a mill pond, trying to keep afloat, learning as I went. Feedback from members was suggesting that they were happy with what was happening and I should keep on doing some more of the same. Significant thing was to extend the outreach into the eastern suburbs and the partnership with Waverley Library I thought was really terrific, but COVID has put a stop to that. I felt, you know, uh, somewhat important. I, I, I love being in the, the, on the committee anyway. Well, I was the, the Minute Secretary for 10 years, didn't have uh, computer type things in, I had to put up with people chatting across the table. I helped organise that strategic planning event with Ilona Lee. I, I had a big part in that. I am now entering my second year as president of AJGS. COVID started around the time I became president. And so I was faced with a brand new experience of how to care for the members, how to help them with their research without being able to meet in public. We found a new word in our vocabulary. It was called Zoom. Zoom gave us an amazing opportunity to reach out to our members, feel like we were in their lounge rooms together, invite people who were interstate, overseas, in other cities to join us for the meetings that we had. We will always be there to help people with their research and finding their Jewish heritage. A wonderful thing that we've been able to, to put together these videos for you. And it's been my privilege over the past weeks to interview several of our members and ask them about their early memories of the society <laughs> They've all had so many wonderful stories to tell, many with a few variations about details, as we would expect with most memories of family stories. So now we'd like to share with you some of those stories 
from the members who have been in the society since its inception or close to it. Now, after we watch this video, I'd love if each of you would share your stories and your memories of your time in the society. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we go through the history of the society. Twenty twenty one marks thirty years since the establishment of the Australian Jewish Genealogical Society. Like all good family legends, the Genesis story of AJGS is one with many versions. Both Sophie Kaplan and I chatted about it a long time ago. 30 years ago, we were both members of the Australian Jewish Historical Society. She knew I was connected with research into history number one, and our family history, number two, because I was also a member of the Society of Australian Genealogists. I started researching my family tree because one of my cousins, Harry Shaw, he had drawn up a, a basic family tree, so I took over that and I started extending it and doing some more research. Went to a couple of talks by Sophie. I started badgering her uh, to form a society, <laughs> which, which she finally did. Uh, my recollection is that David Gross was the person who had the initial idea. I remember starting to do my family tree early in 1991, and I decided at some point that I needed to find further um, materials and, and other ways of researching. So I decided to advertise in the Jewish News about starting a Jewish genealogical society which I got a few responses from. One of the responses was from someone called Stuart Shaw, who we become kind of uh, acquaintances through the society. And the other was from Sophie Kaplan. I recall her bringing me saying of something along the lines of, how dare I start a, an organisation without talking to her first? And I said to her, well, I didn't know who you were. So basically we calmed the situation down and the society started. And within a short time, there was obviously David Gross, Sophie and Ricky Nash. In November 1991, the first Australian Jewish Genealogical Society was formally founded and its committee was Sophie Kaplan, President, Ricky Nash, Vice President, Terry Newman, Secretary, Stuart Shaw, Treasurer, David Lander, committee, David Laufer, committee, Nigel Meinrath, committee. I volunteered to be treasurer, which I worked at for six years. Well, it was just about the time I discovered in 91 that I had Jewish ancestors. Prior to that, I had no idea. My great-great-grandfather was Joshua Lyons, who was Jewish from London, and his parents were from Poland. And at that time... I saw an advertisement somewhere uh, about this new society that was being formed for the uh, research of Jewish ancestors. So I, I joined up. At that stage, Sophie Kaplan was the president. Sophie contacted me and several other people and invited me and, and all these other people to come to a meeting at her place. Some of the early meetings were at Sophie's place in Castle Crag and uh, some of them were at the shul where they're still held. Um, the meetings were very long. <laughs> Once we started the meetings, they didn't finish until maybe one o'clock in the morning. I've never been to the meeting of the, uh, the, the Jewish Genealogical Society, but I've kept in touch through getting the kosher koala, which I always read. We got introduced to uh, other new people who were coming along. I met people like Gary Luke, who seemed to be a good um, source of information, a source of uh, materials. I set up the first of the society's website with various resources and, and the meeting times. 2004, I think, uh, I thought we don't have a forum like the special interest groups on Jewish Gen for Australian Jewish genealogy. I'd set it up on Yahoo. <laughs>
that there's not much goes on, but when anyone does put a question, almost immediately <laughs> there's such good answers come up. But in earlier times, there was a lot more going on there really constantly. I enjoyed going to meetings. You had the opportunity of helping some of the people who hardly knew anything. The specialist knowledge of particular individuals where they researched their own family, but in getting to know that, they'd um, also probed pretty deeply into, into, say, German records or Polish or whatever others. And the sharing of that knowledge was really great. But what I got from the society, I suppose, was encouragement to keep going. These people are interested in this. The range of resources that the society was um, bringing into the country. So there was a, this, this rare collection. The AJGS began to connect with overseas genealogical societies. A strong connection was with New York, where Sally Ann Sack was president. Also, Gary Mokotov's Avatena. The International Review of Jewish Genealogy was subscribed and obtained. It provided amazing research articles from worldwide societies and individuals. And there wasn't so much available on the internet back then either. I mean, the internet was very new. You couldn't go in there and search for the Mormon records, for instance. You had to actually go into, let's say, the church in, in Greenwich. You uh, go through an index, you order films. Uh, several months later, the films arrive. Microfilm. <laughs> yeah, there's microfilm, you little uh, microfish, they call them. People say, where are you going? I say, I'm going down to do some microfishing. <laughs> And then you start uh, scrolling through them and you have, have a, a period of about three weeks to scroll through them. And so I, I used to scroll through films and I used to write down on a notebook every time I saw a familiar surname. I can remember the first time in about 1998, 1999, I went into the Family Search Centre in um, the city in Sydney and asked about... Uh, Ukrainian records and they looked at me as if I'd come from Mars but there's certainly a lot of technology has enabled there are so many databases where the actual original records are now online and you can go and extract them put them up on ViewMate and get somebody to translate them and away you go whereas before it was a slow process of writing to the archive asking them did they have the records they would write back to you you would get that translated, you would forward some money, then they would post it to you. It took months and it often was really unsuccessful and cost a lot of money. I think when AJGS started, there was a real need for collaborative research, both in terms of sharing what little expertise existed, because it was a whole new area, and be financially so that people could get together and if they had an area of common interest, hire a single researcher to go and get a dozen certificates or to investigate a particular cemetery or a particular archive to see what was there. I think it's different now because we've, there's so many resources. There's so many more researchers. There's so much more available online. Zoom gave us an amazing opportunity to reach out to our members, feel like we were in their lounge rooms together, invite people who are interstate, overseas, in other cities to join us for the meetings that we had. It's also nice when we're able to get online together when helping people to be able to share that face-to-face -face experience, share screens together, and really help in a way that we haven't been able to in the past unless we were sitting together in the library at Linfield. My vision for the future of the society is evolving as each day is evolving. I think what we have discovered is that Zoom and being able to do things online is certainly a wonderful way to proceed. Do I know completely how this is going to happen? No. But I do know that the work that we've done the last year behind the scenes of putting all our library books so that you know what's in our library, putting all our kosher koala copies of 29 years up online, so that you can now have a search field to be able to find anything you want in past copies has been a wonderful achievement by the committee that has served. During this next year, we will look at other things that we can do to help people with their research by putting things together online 
and pointing them in the direction. We will always be there to help people with their research and finding their Jewish heritage. I'd like to say a really big thank you to everyone who participated in the interviews and to Danny who had edited it all together. There was a lot more that these members had to say and we're going to create an interesting series from the material that we collected. We'll share that with you when it's ready. So now it's your turn to share the memories that you have of the society. We're a reasonable sized group, so I'd like to call each of you one at a time. It's okay. If you don't wish to speak, it's okay to say so. So let me start. Peter Nash, would you like to, to start for me? Well, <laughs> yes, um, it was amazing that we got going um, and then working out how to get to answers of questions regarding family, whatever, and then uh, work out a strategy. Certainly, um, once we got into the computer world, of course, things got a bit easier as far as finding out where you should ask questions, where you should maybe find um, a way, um, get the right answers, meaning to, to connect with family. Um, and, and that, fortunately, the uh, genealogy world was around the whole world, fortunately. And um, we took advantage, Ricky and I, advantage of all that. We had um, great success and it was also a very friendly way of, of um, working. Peter, thank you. And you're, you are truly a foundation member. You were there right at the very start. So it's wonderful for you not only to have shared the talk that you did, but also the comments that you've added to it now. Thank you so much. Linda Goldberg, how long have you been a member? <clears throat> I can't remember. I can't remember, but I'd, I'd had been a member quite a long time before I went to the bar mitzvah, and the bar mitzvah doesn't seem that long ago to me. But anyway, so that was the thirteenth, so the thirteenth anniversary that we were celebrating back then. Um, I'm just looking at the various faces here, and I can see people who helped me, you know, who, who spurred me along. I think Terry Newman. As soon as I said the word Sunderland, he, he had the Sunderland book, which disappeared at some point, but anyway. And there was um, Jeanette, who translated a, a Russian envelope, an envelope that had an, a, a vital address on it. And then there's, of course, there was Ricky. There was so much that Ricky did that put always put people in contact with other people, and she put me in contact with people who helped me with the Polish side of my family. And Nigel's helped me with Dutch things and, and other family families I've been researching. And on top of that, um, it was the, the camaraderie or there was something that when we, in 2000, when we went to the, I, I, the only the conference that I've attended was the International Conference in London. And that, there was just a real camaraderie amongst the, those who attended the, the, the Australian contingent there. And so all of these things is what, what I think of as um, when I think of the, the society. And I can see now um, with Danny's um, IT skills and visual skills, you know, it's just going to another level again. And it's just great looking at, at all these faces and seeing all the different contributions that people have made. And I, you know, I've mentioned a couple, but, you know, I can see so many others that have also made contributions. Linda, thank you so much. Yeah. Darren, how long have you been a member? I remember from 1999, I remember Because I originally started doing my family trees when I was 13 years old. I've been 1986, I've been out doing my family tree. And everything then I've grown enormous. Now, 
the last few weeks I've gone 20 generations back to, to the time of Shakespeare. <laughs> yes. I wanted to say time of Shakespeare, that's how far I've gone back. Yeah. Mm. I've, I've been, but it's been, it's been a wonderful being a part of the genealogy society. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely that you could join us this afternoon. Vicky Rogart, would you like to share some of your memories? How long have you been a member? I started with Ricky when the society began. And at that time, I didn't have a computer. So it was just face to face. And one day, Ricky arrived with a printout. She'd found something on an LA genealogical society uh, site, which she thought might be useful for me. I looked at the first page and I thought, oh, this poor guy who did this wasted his time. I don't know any of these people. Started flipping it over and then found my mother's entire family there. I subsequently made contact with him in America. And between us, we made an enormous Shapiro family tree. And we speak every Yontif. He lives now in, um, uh, in, in um, he was in Ohio before. He's now moved to Tucson uh, uh, and we speak regularly and we keep up the family tree and the Shapiros are a massive, massive clan. <laughs> All through Ricky. Wonderful, wonderful memories. Liz Suggard, would you like to, to share how long you've been a member of the society in your early memories? You're on. Oh, hello. Yes, um, Barbara, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, I can. Um, yes, I've been a member. For, oh, good. I've been a member for a um, number of years, uh, probably about seven or eight, and uh, but only but I've been a member of the committee uh, only the last since last year, and um, I'm just I'm really thankful that it's to be able to meet the people behind the behind the society who are who were the movers and shakers really of the of it, of it lasting for the 30 years. And I'm just so glad that we've been able to weather the COVID storm and keep it moving forward, hopefully. Um, I, I was keen to uh, make sure that the, that the actual book, the books in the library, we, we could um, make sure they're online and accessible to people at least. Um, and, and that was an important resource because books, uh, as we know, are being uh, discarded everywhere, but um, because of online data, but books will always be important. So I've been really happy to contribute. That's probably Please. about all I can say, I think. And, and she's let the secret out. She's been the lady who together with Danny started scanning the ISBN numbers of the over 400 books in our library. Mm -hmm. And she's been tagging them all so we could find out which countries they were all representing. So Liz, thank you very much. Well, Robin, do you have some memories for us that you'd like to share with us? Unfortunately, no, because <laughs> I haven't done very much research. I, I do have a memory. I can't remember how long I've been, <clears throat> pardon me, belong to the society, but I do have some feeling that I've had contact with Terry Newman. That was for the Jewish I, painting. I think um, he came here to take a photo of that picture I showed you this week of the rabbi. Um, but and I haven't done much, I haven't done any research through the society, but I've, I've been a member for quite a while. And I think that will change because two of my younger cousins, have just started the family tree. So they'll be looking for everything. But it was so nice to meet you and so nice to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Nigel. Yes, is that better? Can we hear? That's much better. Hello, everyone. Um, it's not so much a case of reminiscences, but it's so lovely to see some of my Dear, my really dear friends, uh, Terry, good to see you, David, Gary. Um, 
Gold, yes. Uh, it's just just lovely to see you all again, and I can't believe 30 years is gone. It's <laughs> amazing. Oh, hello, Stuart. How are you down there in the corner? <laughs> Hope you're well. I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> just lovely to see you all, and, and it was the camaraderie that was lovely, mm. and the trips overseas were um, very, very special. Um, trips with Peter and Ricky and Sophie, um, some of our Melbourne gang. Um, it, it's, it's been an incredible journey. And I just want to thank many of you um, for being on that journey with us. And that's about it. But thanks a lot. Thanks, Nigel. Pleasure. Kim. Oh, hi. Well, I was just thinking what I would say if you picked on me. <laughs> and I think, I think I've been a member for about 20 years and I was contemplating the first article I wrote for Kosher Koala. I was looking at this relatively small family, my Jewish heritage mob, um, and I had a question then about their name. And I've done 20 years worth of digging and talking to people and Ricky helped me with lots of um, Polish records. I've been painstakingly with AIDS translating Polish documents to try and figure out where this little tiny gem of information is that will answer the question I asked 20 years ago. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> so I'm actually no further forward than I was uh, in, from a research perspective, but from any other perspective, I've learned heaps. I've met lots of interesting people. I've had really a good time being on committee for quite a number of years now. And I'm sorry, Kim Phillips isn't able to be here today, but she and I were uh, travelled together and did a lot of our uh, Jewish research together and uh, travelled with Peter and Ricky. We went on a trip around Turkey uh, many years ago. So I've met people and I've enjoyed my time and I, that's more that I look forward to than actually, you know, I don't think I'll ever find the answer to my research question, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun looking. Kim, thank you so much. Who else do we got? Vicky, Vicky Nadell. Hi, well, um, look, I haven't been a member for a long time, although um, I, the society has often been on my, my mind. Many years ago, I did go to a workshop somewhere over the North Shore, um, uh, taken by Sophie Kaplan. It wasn't at the Linfield Shul, but um, I remember thinking, um, um, I have to continue um, to be involved. And um, of course, time and life and um, um, took over. And it's only in the last few years that I have um, um, joined again. And it was really as a result of um, knowing uh, Jeanette Sulos, um, and who actually um, directed me to um, somebody who, who was a family member who she knew, and I had actually met, but it was a side of the family. Um, my, my background is actually Australian and New Zealand and, um, and English on one, one side, and of course, and on another part, uh, another side of my family, there were East, there's um, Eastern European side, but I was very interested in one particular side of my family. I always thought that we had some Sephardi blood and, um, and it was through Jeanette who put me in touch with um, somebody else who had actually done the whole tree right back to the 1650s in Braganza and um, uh, Pont de Lim in Portugal. So that was a very successful um, um, event and I'm very thankful to, to Jeanette. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed being, um, only for the year, but being on the um, committee. And um, I agree, I think, with Kim that it's, it, it's a journey. Um, I have so many questions. I'm sure I'm not <laughs> going to be able to ask them, but um, it's nice to be on the road to discovery. And um, I, I also find that um, I'm, I think that the Ko Kosher Koala is an incredible um, publication. And even if it's not um, specifically about my, my family, um, 
that's of no, um, uh, that doesn't matter. I think that what's wonderful is that through that um, you can actually enlarge your your own um, your own knowledge of um, Jewish history and movements. And um, so I'm I'm pleased to to be here, and it's been lovely to to meet the people that I I, I have met, and I think it's an incredible um, gem of an organisation which I I hope to continue to be a member of. Thank you. Thanks, Vicky. All right, we've still got a few more people here that we'd like to chat to. Sarah. Sound? Hi. Um, I joined the Society, to my recollection, through the Australian Jewish, Australian Jewish Historical Society. Uh, Sophie encouraged me to join. I've been a history nut from early childhood. And I wanted to understand more of my mother's family and also my husband's family. My husband was from Germany. And he knew we had his mother's family tree, not his father's family tree. My mother's parents both claimed Jewish ancestry. And the Australian Jewish Genealogical Society helped me research a lot. I found good leads and then suddenly, oh, that was a false, that was a red herring, go back to start again. We had a few of those, but it's really expanded my horizons, I've found people who were cousins and then sometimes they turned out not to be actual cousins, but a cousin by marriage because somebody was actually a stepfather and not an ancestor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's really been a wonderful journey and I love the way Kosher Koala and the various talks have expanded my knowledge of history generally and genealogy generally, which I love because I'm just such a nut about those things. Thank you. Sarah, that's lovely. Thank you so much. How about Sunny? Sunny, you've got some stories to share of your early memories? Sound, darling. Turn your microphone on. You're on okay. mute, Sunny. What? Well, I had an amazing breakthrough um, at, at the uh, Canberra uh, conference some years ago. And we're at the dinner. And Robin Dryan came across and she said, do you know these people, all whose surnames were Orchard? And I said, yes, they're my father's aunts and uncles. So that uh, Robin was helping one of my other cousins with the family tree and she produced a history which gave me the information and enlightened me to where my family came from in Russia. And that was very, that, I knew that thanks to Robin Dryan. Lovely. Thanks, Sunny. Leanne? Yes. Well, I was struggling with my research, not having many people in the family with the knowledge that I required in order to find out the history of my mother, essentially from Poland. And of course, it is through the society that I was able to find a lot of the answers and the help of Ricky, who put me in the right direction as well. Danny uh, presented uh, very interesting conferences and that helped me as well. Thank you to everyone. These days, I'm still missing a lot of information and I guess, like many people, I have to just think of that's past history and there's nothing I can do. <laughs> But thanks to the society and to everyone who helped me. It's been great. Thanks, Leanne. Alan, would you like to share yes, your thank memories? you. Thank you very much. I've been in the society since the beginning. I remember Sophie Catlin, I think it might have been an ECAJ meeting where she said she was forming the Genealogical Society. And I've been, uh, you know, I've been a tragic with genealogy for a very long time. My family couldn't understand why I was so interested in why we used to write letters in the old days. And years later, they're all in touch with me wanting to find out the family tree. Now, um, the early days, I remember Sophie asked me to write an article for Kosher Koala, which she never published. I won't go into that. And uh, I was at one meeting of the society in AGM that where Diane Armstrong spoke about her book Mosaic, which was fascinating. 
And the reason we were at that was we had, um, it was Canberra Day and we had a public holiday in Canberra. And a few months before we'd won a raffle at a Melbourne Cup lunch for a night at the, the Hyatt on the, in the harbour. And I noticed that the, the, um, the society's AGM and Sophie almost dropped when she saw me walk in and, uh, and attend that meeting at Linfield. I've been in many of the Zoom meetings and we're in Canberra, as I say, which is um, not so easy to get to meetings, but the society in, in Canberra, we don't have a separate genealogical society, but we do have a historical society, the four meetings a year, and one is devoted to genealogy. Uh, I mean, the, the year before, uh, last year, uh, Leonie Webb, for example, gave a fascinating talk on her aunt, who was a Holocaust survivor and came to Australia. And this year, I actually missed the talk by um, Ronit, who used to be at the Israeli embassy, who um, was of Moroccan extraction. Um, the, uh, it's quite interesting doing a lot of work and how you get things and how other people get things. My wife's done very little work on her family tree. And what happened was someone in Israel, Anita, there she is in the background, someone in Israel produced a family tree of her mother's father going back to the 18th no, century. No, Sorry, say I'm saying the 18th century, seven, back to <laughs> 1790, having done no work in it. And we were, I've, we've got a son in Jerusalem, and we were there, we looked him up and uh, took, took them out and just absolutely, it was all, it was all there. Amazing. Uh, the, I, the Gillis family. The Gillis family. And uh, how they're, this one's kind of, Miriam Margolis is in it, so she's in Anita's family tree. I won't say any more about that. <laughs> uh, I won't go into, go into that. But I've also, she's a genealogy tragic. Oh, she, she, is. Is, she is actually. She did a lot yeah. of work in the Gillis tree. She did a lot of work on that tree. Um, and yeah. was in touch with this uh, person in, in Jerusalem who's, who's, who's put it all together. And, uh, and, and my, my daughter who, wasn't particularly interested in family, has just um, read her biography for a book club. And she said, gosh, I'm reading this. And she said, it's just like our family. I said, it is our family. <laughs> uh, that's another matter. <laughs> anyway, and uh, it's quite fascinating because remember in the old days, I put someone in America in touch with her first cousin she hadn't seen since she was a little girl. And I said to this woman, yes, I've heard this story before and I know this story and you are related to me very distantly. I don't know exactly how, but this is, this is some of the things that I was able to correct some things that she had. And then someone in Glasgow got in touch with me a year ago who took, who's part of the society there and got it and had taken an interest in our family and gave me information that I'd been looking for for years. So there you are. Anyway, so that's just a, just a few anecdotes. I won't, I won't say any more. Alan, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Diane, would you like to share your story with us and how the society helped to shape your research? And how long have you been a member? Uh, I've been a member since about 2002. And um, I, you, you, we all talk about a train of events and that's how I came to find the society. Um, because in the same week as we're celebrating our 30th anniversary of, of our society, on Tuesday, I celebrated another 30th anniversary and it was the anniversary of Park Post Adoption Resource Centre. And it was through discovering that I was adopted that got me in touch with mm -hmm. uh, Park and then uh, got me in touch with my mother when I wrote her a letter. And she in turn gave me the birth certificate of her, of her mother. And that was when I discovered and she told me that we were Jewish. So from there, with, armed with the birth certificate of my grandmother, which uh, and her name then was uh, Tamar Schwartz. I went to the only place I could think of, and that was the Seventh-day Adventists, because people had said, oh, they have a lot of history. And so I went there one afternoon to Carlingford, and they said, this is a Jewish name. You're going to need to go and get in touch with um, the uh, Jewish contacts uh, in Hull, because that's where she was born, in England. 
but she said, you know, it's a funny thing. She said, this afternoon, there's a lady from the Australian Jewish Genealogical Society, uh, a lady by the name of Ricky Nash. She's coming over to see us today to compare notes. And she's bringing with her um, a gentleman by the name of David Laufer. So um, I uh, met Ricky and, um, and David and they said, uh, we're from the society, we can help you. And so I joined and later on, a couple of years later, when I discovered my great grandfather's will, which was made in England, uh, he mentioned a cousin, in a, a brother in America and a sister in who was still living in uh, um, Cairo in Egypt. And uh, so I was talking, I was asked to give a little talk about my discoveries and uh, Peter Nash uh, was very good. He said, I know a Gloria and Larry over in New York they'll be able to track down your relations from that letter, from that will. And within 48 hours, I had the names of cousins. So the society has really, and Peter has, re, and Ricky, they've all opened up a whole new um, scope, a whole new uh, experience of uh, genealogy to me and to my uh, heritage. And also, um, I found as someone else mentioned today um, the camaraderie that's there. And I found that very much so when I went to Canberra for the uh, first conference between uh, uh, the people from Victoria and, the, and us from New South Wales. And we all got together in Canberra. And it was just a big, like a big family gathering coming together. It was just lovely. And so that's wonderful experiences that I've had since I've joined and continue to do because I've made friends for life. Diane, thank you so much. It has been a very special week for you. The two major 30th celebrations in the one week. Yes. It's been amazing. Rob Shea, would you like to uh, add some comments to this, how long you've been a member and what the no. society is doing for you? I was I was just direct messaging with Nigel, who uh, who I've known for a couple of years, but the, Nigel had no idea that I was involved in the committee, and I and I explained on the direct message that uh, it's your fault, Barbara. So, so Nigel, to complete that story, Barbara <laughs> and I worked together at IBM for a few years. We worked together very closely, and it was a it was a great working relationship. So she reached out to me to help here in the society about a year ago. And uh, I joined the committee at that time and I've been helping uh, Danny and Barbara and the, all, the, all the team uh, on there with any tech issues and ideas about how we can push things forward. And I've also learned a, lo a lot about genealogy and I had, I, in a bit, when I finished up my career with IBM, I did a little bit of research into my family background, but I now realise that there's so much more to do that can be done. And through with, with help from... Uh, 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 I'm also uh, related to David, who married my cousin, but uh, David's brother-in-law, Ted, who's doing a lot of research into one side of my family and I'm learning a lot from what he's doing as well. So no, it's a, it's a very interesting area to be involved in and I'm really happy to be able to help everyone on the committee where I can. Rob, thank you so much. Jeanette, how about you telling us your experience? How long have you been a member? Well, since uh, 1994, so it's a fair time. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, look, I just want to mention a couple of people who, who really works, that, like Kim Phillips has hardly been mentioned, but she was a mainstay of the uh, society for many years. And um, she was the one, she was very good um, um, recording things. You know, I think she was behind the, the uh, setting up of the um, CD of Brookwood, the old section and with Terry went with her and Gary and I can't remember who else. But um, that was a that was a, a man's job. Um, 
you know, that, that made a huge difference to all researchers of um, Australian Jews. Um, and she was, I think the, the National Conference in Canberra would have had a hard time setting itself up without all the work that she did. She was really, she and Ricky, um, they were, I think the two of them were the, <clears throat> the main people to thank for, for its success. Um, also, um, people like Bernie Friedman, who's not around anymore, but he, um, he played, played quite a, a large part of setting up one of the CDs. <clears throat> you know, we, we have CDs of the, um, um, the uh, I suppose, uh, the records of, well, birth, death and marriage and that kind of thing, um, that, that, that we still have the CD of all our, our archives and the archives of the Australian Jewish Historical Society as well. And she, he did a, a, a mammoth job on that. Um, I mean, of course, our Danny is, is doing a massive job, <laughs> a mammoth job with all the work she's doing. I don't know how she manages to fit that in with a full-time job as well. But, um, uh, you know, got all, all my admiration. Other, other things are people who've come from, from a long way away to, like Frank Atkinson lives in Canberra, but every so often he'll come up to the Society for workshops and things and he's been sick, you know, he's sort of had heart trouble and goodness knows what else. He must be at well over 80, maybe close to 90, and his research is basically in, in gold and jewellery, but um, uh, he was, he's also, I think, he was our representative at the, at the uh, Maitland um, synagogue. And um, um, cemetery, Jewish cemetery. So yes, Gary, of course, has done a huge amount of work for decades. Um, you know, these are all people who, um, well, Gary is still working with us, which is great, but they all need a mention, um, apart from, you know, Ricky and all the people who have helped. Um, other people uh, come from, we've got members who come, drag themselves all the way over from the, the far western suburbs like Naomi Silverton and, um, and Lynette Levy, you know, and I sort of think, gee, you know, it's a long way to come. Um, some of us live close by Linfield or, or some, of course, come, you know, and then there's Diane who comes to, up from Berry, I think. <laughs> um, you know, we've got some very young, um, very enthusiastic members who, you know, we're very grateful to see. And then we've got older people who've, who've come, people who come regularly, like the Charlsons, um, come in every, every workshop pretty much, the, the two of them. They've done this absolutely. Um, they're not looking to do any more research, but they come and they read the books and, you know, and um, John Stanhope, who, you know, I mean, we've, we've got some wonderful members. All our members are wonderful. But some, <laughs> some of them have been there right from the beginning and, and they all help in one way or the other. Yes, Jeanette. And just for the record, we did reach out to Kim and we oh, yes. asked if we could interview her and she declined. She was invited to join us this afternoon and she also declined. Oh, right. So she okay. certainly was not left out and she was mentioned. Oh, that's, that's good. Cool. Um, so we we do acknowledge the work that she did for the society over the many years that she was oh, a part yes. of. Okay. Yes. Well, she's, she's a very close friend of Kim Morris, so I think that she'll hear all about it. Oh, yes. I'm sure she will. All right, David Gross, would you uh, like to add how long you've been a member and your early mem uh, some early memories that you perhaps didn't share in earlier chats? Well, I don't, I don't know how long I've actually been a member because I was a founding member. Um, but there's been times when I wasn't a member and I rejoined and I stopped being a member and it, it varied depending on what was going on in my life, I guess. But um, I, I've been sitting here thinking, actually, I wonder when the 30th anniversary would have been had I not put the ad in and kick-started the, got <laughs> Sophia to actually kick-start the meeting. Um, it could have been a few more years because <laughs> I know she'd been talking about it for, well, not at the time, but I, I knew she'd been thinking about it for a long time and having looked through the Jewish news over the last um, few weeks and going back in many, many years, even prior to 1991, there have been times when she had discussions with the Jewish Historical Society saying she was going to get a, a, a genealogical society together and there was a little bit of politics on, between that as well. But um, 
So I, I, I guess you could say I've been a member for that long. I've been doing my research since about April 1991 when I, um, one of my friends in Melbourne um, showed me how easy it was to trace family tree. And he was involved actually from the Melbourne Genealogical Society point of view, helping with the, the, new, the Sydney one. That was Joe Stosser. And um, he was working with um, Aubrey Schwartz on the, on the, on the oh, Melbourne group. Wow. And so I got going and he said, why don't you start a society in Sydney? And so that's when I put an ad in the Jewish News, thinking it's the only way of getting more information. So, um, and I find some of, some of the other materials, other than the society, because the society is great from a camaraderie point of view, from the materials, but with the, the advent of the internet, there's the Jewish Gen group, there's Ancestry, there's My Heritage, there's your DNA samples. And, and I'll tell you, what, if, if you haven't done your DNA yet, um, both with My Heritage and also with Ancestry, you should, because it's amazing. It's, it opens up another red herring because I've got now got about 160,000 relations out there. Um, <laughs> of course, a lot of them just do their DNA and they're a match, but they don't do their tree. So there's absolutely nothing to go on. I get emails from people saying, oh, I noticed we're a DNA match. How are we related? And <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> but I've actually confirmed a lot of relationships like um, Bernie Friedman was mentioned before and he, he got in touch with me some years ago. I think probably 10 years ago and suggesting that we were related somehow and that two of our ancestors way back were siblings and and I, I looked into every level of my tree to find and I had to go back um, seven or eight generations to the early 1700s to actually find a link and then one one thing I've also encountered and that is don't ever give up because when I started my tree one quarter of my family is Polish three quarters of my family is Transylvanian and everyone says you'll never get anywhere with Poland because that's they're all the, those records were destroyed. Mm. I've actually got more relations that I found through Poland than the rest of my tree. Um, back as I said, back to the early 1700s. So, so never give up. <laughs> but um, so Bernie and I were related, and we've done DNA. I've done DNA sampling, which have matched other members of his family, which confirm that link. And I found hundreds of relations, one of whom was an old friend of my dad's. And we only discovered some years ago that he was actually a cousin of my mum's and they didn't know it. <laughs> um, so they never knew they were related. Um, and that's on, on Bernie Friedman's side of the family. Um, yet, you know, he was a friend of my dad's through dentistry in England. So it's um, it, there's a lot of funny things that come out of this tree. And I, I think it creates friendships. I mean, I've got some great friendships through this society. And I noticed Nigel before when he was getting quite emotional, I was feeling the same sort of thing. A lot of the people in the society have made great friends and uh, and expanded my family. And um, my sister's always complaining that I'm more interested in dead people than living people. Um, <laughs> and it's not that, it's just knowing where you come from. So, <laughs> David, thank you for some lovely memories. Stuart, would you like to say a few words about how long you'd been a member and what the society's brought you? Uh, <laughs> Well, I will just, just, I just like to say it's, it's good, it's good to see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the old original members, original members, uh, coming up like, uh, David Cross, uh, uh Peter Nash, uh, Terry Newman. But really, I don't uh, think it's much more we can. Uh, See, but I don't know how we can get out of it without just well, leaving other people. Huh? It was 26. Uh, down, it was 26. Oh, she did you know that? See down the bottom? That... Could the person talking please um, mute their microphone because we can hear you? I think it's Robin. Yes, uh, okay. sorry. <laughs> Robin, please. Thank sorry. you. Okay. Sorry, Stuart. Was there something else you'd like to add to that? Uh, I, was able, I was able to help a cousin then write, write a book about the family, which published uh, quite a few years ago now. Uh, um, uh, now, um, and just a couple of years ago, I, I, sent, I, sent, I, sent, I sent a copy to the, to the National Library of Israel. Uh, which I'm very pleased about. Uh, uh, it was, 
we had a lot of, lot of, a lot of camaraderie over the years at the committee meetings and, uh, and you know, people buying the family trees. Uh, that's where I did my own it. Won it. Won it. <laughs> that book, that book bandwidth is low, unfortunately. So, uh, so that's about it. Stuart, that's lovely. Thank you so much for sharing that. And the rest of you may not know, but tomorrow is actually Stuart's birthday. So oh. let's wish him all a very happy birthday for tomorrow. Happy Have a birthday, wonderful Stuart. day. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then oh, well, thank you. <laughs> two more people to go. Gary I and Jeanette just has a question. Just, oh. Jeanette, you're not looking at the camera. You're looking oh, somewhere else. All right. Can I add just one more thing? I forgot the most important person who comes from far away, and that's Kim Morris, who's been coming to meetings um, regularly um, and, you know, uh, I mean, and contributing her, her skills and her painting and all the rest of it come all the way from Penrith, which is... Quite, quite a, a marathon, I think. That was all I wanted to say. Thanks, Jeanette. Thanks for adding and, that. And some people wouldn't go that far for their holidays. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Gary and Pete. And Gary and Terry are our last two. So, who wants to go first there? Okay, I will. Okay, Gary. Another name that Jeanette neglected is Michael Taub who had contributed so much with translations and other. Um, a few odd things that stuck in my memory over the years. I, th I think it was maybe 20 years ago or so, and it probably was Ricky who organized a open genealogical session at Darlinghurst uh, in one of the rooms attached to the museum. And I remember someone turning up and going through the Gedent book, the um, German memorial book, looking for a name, looking for a name, found the name. And I asked him, you know, was this some relative? And he rolled up his sleeve and it was the same number. <laughs> it was it really struck me that, that day. Um, another thing that really stuck in my memory was um, something David Lauther came up with. Um, at the Mormons, the Family History Centre, he was going through microfilms of uh, one of his um, Polish areas, looking for the name Laufa and recognising them, photocopying bits to get them translated later. And then he said, suddenly the language was Russian, cursive Russian. And he realised, um, how is he going to find them? And when he looked at them, the, the letters looked familiar. He remembered back to geometry in school, the, uh, the Greek letters <laughs> that were used marking angles and whatever, figured out uh, the main letters, lambda, etc., to look for, and continued on uh, photocopying any that looked like Laufa. <laughs> it was really innovative thinking. Amazing. <laughs> yep. Just amazing. Um, Another odd thing, um, with my own family research, uh, my father was from the border of Little Village, from the border of Poland and Slovakia, and a woman there, some, I can't remember how she got in touch with me, but uh, she was interested in the Jewish history of the area and was visiting the local archives and was sending me various documents. Some of them were from Emperor Joseph II's period, very late 1700s with various decrees. And uh, one of them was the old German handwriting, but I didn't know, and it took a while to find out that it was actually Latin, but in the old German handwriting. And it may have, I can't remember if it was Jeanette or Sonny, who put me on to a retired Latin teacher. Uh, I joined up with him. He wasn't able to read the German, so I had to read it for him. And he said his stomach is turning. The grammar was so bad and apparently Latin is very exact. I realized um, where there was this across the empire, 
telling all these local clerks, this is now the language you need to use. And so many of them were just not skilled in those languages. That, um, so that was an unusual sort of little historical background that came out of that. Anyway, that's just some of the, my the join the dots memories. <laughs> Thanks so much, Gary. Yeah. Terry, it's your turn, but I'd like you to look at the other camera. Yes. That's the one. That's the one. Come on over to this one. <laughs> That's, the Terry Newman, yeah. That's the laptop. The other one's... Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Barbara, it's been a fantastic afternoon. And, and I've been thinking about all these people I used to be, used to see very regularly in the old days. And I was thinking, what's well, so sad that some of them are are no longer with us in more ways than one. But, but I remember people like, um, yeah, like and a whole lot of people, which we don't want to go into now, is, but um, we've learned a lot in the, in the years that have gone by. And, and it's been a marvelous activity, even though there's so much more to do in a sense. So I only wanted to say thank you once again for arranging the program with Danny and, and her helpers. <laughs> and a whole lot of them. It's, it's been fantastic. Thanks very much, Terry. Thank you. Really appreciate it. We have one last person, Danny Haskey, <laughs> would, like to, would like to also make a few comments. She seems to have been a member also for a few years. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you um, for joining us today. I hope you've had a nice afternoon. Um, yeah, I joined in, I think, about 2008 or 2009. Ricky, like for a lot of people, got me in, and I had an inkling that we were cousins, and she confirmed everything and showed me, you know, how we were related. So I'm hugely indebted for her, with her for um, some of you know, filling in a whole lot of blanks and showing me how to do this research thing. Um, one of the reasons I'm so committed to the society and that I sort of do so much is because to a certain degree, genealogy changed my life. Um, I started researching when I was in a period of ill health. I had um, was suffering depression and anxiety and I couldn't work and I started researching uh, an event that happened in our family, which ended up um, being the Australian story episode that I participated in. But then after that, when I started working again, I ended up, I was in Canberra doing something at GI Science Australia and an old family story popped into my head about this gold nugget that my grandmother used to drag me into the Australian Museum and point at in the cabinet in the gold room, um, there was a plaster cast model and she'd point out and say, your grandparents found that. And I always found it a bit implausible, but uh, I had half an hour to kill and I asked the receptionist, you know, if there was somebody I could talk to and she pointed me to the library and I went down and within 10 minutes, they'd found a, a, um, a survey book and I, I looked down the list of the nuggets and there was my great, great and three times great grandfather's names and the nugget that they found. And that tiny little win so fast, that just did it. That was my gateway drug. And so like everybody here, since then, I've been immersed. In 2010, I went on three months travelling. And without the society, I would not, I would never have been able to, to get the depth of um, just data. But the other thing that I, it really helped me discover was an absolute passionate love of story. And um, as the editor of Kosher Koala, one of the things I'm really committed to doing is letting people tell their stories. We, we want your stories. We want to know your wins. We want to know your frustrations. We want you to submit they can be short, they can be long, they can be detailed, they can be a how-to. We really want how, how you did something will then help somebody else with that. And in the, um, in the issue that will come out later this afternoon, 
one of our new members, Hilary May Black, um, has given me a lovely article about her discoveries and how um, the records from the marriage uh, authorizations from the United Synagogue helped her discover information about her family. So we really want, you know, if anybody's got, even if it's, if it's a lovely anecdote that they want to share, send it to send it to me through the website. We're going to also be embarking on a bit of a website refresh. So if you've got any feedback on the website or things you'd like to see on it, just drop us a line through the website. There's a couple of little different contact links that you can get to and um, and we'll we'll take take all your ideas on board. But um, I know that everybody's as committed to the society and um, like as several other people have said, there's camaraderie, camaraderie research help. Um, it helped, you know, it lets me put my nerd hat on and I've learned all sorts of amazing skills. And um, so, yeah, we're just going to, we're going to keep doing, we've got, we're planning lots of things. So we'd really like people to get involved. We'd really like um, people to, if there's things that they <coughs> volunteer for, just drop us a note and let us know. And um, we're going to be, hopefully have lots of projects next year that that people will be able to participate in. So, um, but if you've got a talk that you want to give or you want to hear um, or somebody that you run across who you think, oh, these guys are really, really good. It'd be really nice for them to talk to the society. Um, let us know because we're going to have, hopefully, all sorts of different ways of doing things uh, moving forward. Um, COVID's given us an opportunity to, to rethink some stuff. So um, let us know. We don't know if you don't tell us. <laughs> So I will now have, oh, David's got his hand up. He has. I've got to be polite instead of interrupting. Can I just ask, when is it likely that we'll start back at the Reverend Gatch Library in the synagogue? Next year is as good as I'm going to tell you right at this moment. Okay, so not this year. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not this year. Definitely not. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like I'm to wrap it up. My mum was saying, my yes. mum was to tell me, my mum was tell me, she never asked the right question when, when the people were alive I could answer them. That's true. Absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Ask people yeah. while they're alive the questions you want to yeah. know. Yeah. Otherwise, it gets far more challenging. The person you do is asking the correct question. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'd like I'm, to I'd wrap like it up. Yes, I'd Sarah. Like what Darren said, uh, I started doing family research into my father's family. Um, when my... Um, mother's parents passed away and she realised there were mistakes on their certificates and I thought I'm going to interview my father's relatives because I had some questions there and I interviewed everybody I could get hold of this was in the 1970s I'm so glad for that well done okay I'd just like to wrap it up and and give a little of my own short history in the society I actually joined the society many years ago have contributed a couple of articles to kosher koala over the years and also ended up at the Canberra conference. Due to work and a whole bunch of other things going on in my life, I didn't go as regularly to meetings as perhaps I would have liked to. But I have been around and a part of this society on and off for many years. So today we've been able to share stories of our, of our society and your involvement and your participation is what's made the society. As Danny said quite rightly, we need to increase our membership and ask for more supported events and engagements. Otherwise, this society cannot survive. Next year, we plan to continue having our talks online as well as in person. We'll continue having workshops at Linfield next year, not this year. Thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to an in-person celebration early next year when we feel it's safe for us all to be able to come together. But thank you all very, very no, much. Just, thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just thank Barbara and Danny for organising this. It was most professional. Thank you so thank much. Right. Very good. Thanks, thank so you. Much. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.